everyone, I'm Michelle Smith and welcome to my channel. I have two fall Dollar Tree DIYs for you today. In the first DIY I'll show you how to make these really quick and easy accent pillows using the Dollar Tree placemat. In my second DIY I will show you how to make this adorable scarecrow standing decor piece. Both of these projects are a great way to add a bit of fall decor to your home. Let me go ahead and show you how to make them. Here is a list of the tools and materials I use to complete the project. For your convenience, I've also included a detailed list in the description box below. Let's get started. So for this first DIY, I'm going to show you how to turn the placemats you can pick up at Dollar Tree or anywhere for that matter into an accent pillow. Now um, I've chosen two different uh, placemats that you can currently get at Dollar Tree and I really like this one. This is much more of a fabric. It is knitted and it is a Napperon placemat. But they have several different patterns of these to choose from. They had them last year, they have them this year, so if you don't find them this year, keep your eye out next year. And then uh, this one, this one is new to me this year. Uh, these are the really shiny, but they are two ply. Now it's up to you if you want to show um, on your pillow to have this be your front and back, or if you want your backside to be the solid pillar. That is up to you. I prefer to have print side on both in case I get a stain I can just flip it over but these come out really nice so all you'll need is two placemats some hot glue and then what I'm using to fill them with is just an old pillow that I had I just uh, replaced them and I kept it so I could use the stuffing line up your ends make sure everything meets really well and then you want to start at one of the straight sides and then just go ahead and run a bead of glue near the edge there and I just do a couple inches at a time that way I know I can match up the top and bottom press down pick up another section lay down a little bit more Now if you put too much in and you get some that comes out, if you have a 100% silicone tool, you can use that and you just run it right along the edge. That'll clean up anything that squeezes out and it'll also help seal it. And then if it dries on here, once it dries, it just wipes off. Okay, so once you have one side done, or the short side, then I start working up on both sides and I'll do a couple inches and then I'll do the other side a couple inches. That way you'll make sure that your placemats match on both sides. Okay, so I have everything sealed. All my ends match. I left this whole end open for right now. So I'm just going to take my stuffing and I'm going to go ahead and stuff up my pillow. Leaving the whole end open just makes it easy. I can put a good amount in there at a time. This stuff is really loose and so it's kind of messy. And then just go ahead and stuff up your pillow. Okay, so once your pillow is about three fourths of the way full, then you can go ahead and start to close on the sides. You need to be able to get that down nice and smooth so that you can close it and so that the top and bottom match. 
So just start on <clears throat> one corner, lay down a little bit of glue, a couple inches at a time, pull it down, let that seal. And then you'll want to go to the opposite side, the corner, and do the same thing there. Okay, so you have a small opening now that you can finish stuffing both corners and then the center and then close it. And there you go. Another absolutely gorgeous decorative pillow, quick and easy to make. Here is a list of the tools and materials I use to complete the project. For your convenience, I've also included a detailed list in the description box below. Let's get started. Okay, for DIY number two, you're going to need one of the long signs from the Dollar Tree. I'm using one from Easter. If it has any three-dimensional items on it, go ahead and remove those, like the bow. Go ahead and remove the feet. And then go ahead and remove anything that it's used to hang it with. Okay, and then turn it over. We're going to do it on the back. And so if you have any stickers or anything on the back, you'll want to remove those. Okay, and then you're also going to need uh, one of these signs. It's a steak sign for uh, fall. And uh, you just want either the home or the blessed, whichever one you want. I just pulled off the blessed. And when I pulled it off, it did kind of damage the back. And then I looked at the front here and this paper is really, really uh, on there very loosely. So I just basically have been peeling it off. And then I will sandpaper that because I kind of damaged this. This is going to be the brim of our hat. Okay, so either piece will work uh, as long as it's longer than the board. Okay, so you're going to want to go ahead and clean that paper off unless you were lucky enough that this came off nice and smooth. Okay. Okay, so the paper, the top portion of the paper pulled off really easy, but it left behind um, some more and uh, that's a little bit harder to get off. So I found the easiest way is to get one of these tools. You can pick them up from the Dollar Tree. It's over in the hardware section and it is a paint scraper. And this is the smallest one that they have. And then you just need like a damp sponge or paper towel. Just go ahead and lay that over the area that you want to remove. You want it to get a little bit moist. And then pick it up and just go over with the scraper. And it will slowly but surely remove it all without damaging the MDF board. You can see it does pull it off. And the board underneath is fine. So once you remove all of this, if you can't get your top layer off, do the same thing. Just get something damp, start at one end, get that top portion damp, and use a scraper to remove it. Once you get that all off, just go ahead and sand it so it's nice and smooth and ready to paint. Okay, so on your big board, you're going to want to go ahead and fill the two holes where the hangers were. I'm just going to be using some uh, plastic wood filler. You can also use uh, silicone. You can use uh, spackling. Dollar Tree does carry spackling, so you can use that. Just, I don't want to see those holes. So go ahead and fill those, let them dry, and then sand them off so they're nice and smooth. Okay, so I got everything off. I sanded everything. I made sure to sand the edges so they were nice and clean. I sanded the holes here that I filled so it's nice and smooth. Next, you want to decide where you're going to place your hat. I decided I want mine about there. And you want to take a pencil and go ahead and mark that. 
the top and the bottom brim. Set that aside. And then for the face, I'm just going to use a round paper plate. I want the face to be about the size of the plate, but I'm going to add some hair up here on the top. So I'm going to drop it down about a half an inch. Make sure I get it placed where I want it. And then I'm going to use the plate as my guide and then just go in there and do a half circle. And then I'm going to use the plate again. I'm going to drop down about an inch and a half to two inches, place it, and then trace again. Now all I'm doing is dividing out my board so I know where everything is because we're going to paint. So I, I don't need to paint in here because this is where the brim is going to be glued on. Now the reason why I want to paint everything first is because I want to attach some hair before I glue this down. And that's why I need to get most of the painting done before. Okay, so for the brim and the top part of the hat, I'm going to use a dark brown, which uh, is burnt umber in apple barrel. For the face, I'm going to paint it khaki by apple barrel. And then I haven't quite decided. Um, I may do a mixture of both, but I'm either going to go kind of orange, green, and brown for the clothing down here. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and get my base paint done, and then uh, I will be back. And what I mean by that is I'm just going to paint everything the flat color. Now you want to come down just slightly past the line that you marked. You want to make sure that that whole area is properly painted. Make sure to get your edges. Okay, so I'm just going to get a base coat done of the colors that I want, and then I'll be back and we'll start to put it together. Okay, so I have my base paint done. I went ahead and did orange and I mixed the orange with a little bit of the khaki to kind of fade it out. I didn't want it quite that bright. Next, you're gonna wanna go ahead and draw yourself a face. You need to just make sure that it's going to fit on your board. Once you've got it down, how you transfer it is you turn it over and take a graphite pencil and just go over the area where you've drawn. This will help you transfer the image onto your board. Okay, so just cover up the areas where you have drawn on the other side. And then you just simply lay it down. Make sure you find your placement. And then simply go over and trace your image. Then when you remove it, you will have a light image.
Then you're just going to need a black Sharpie. And then I'm going to go ahead and trace over my face. Okay, so I've gone ahead and outlined everything with my black Sharpie. Now I'm just going to go in with an orange Sharpie and color in the nose. And then I have a white paint pen that I picked up from Dollar Tree. I'm going to use this to uh, do the eyes. And now I'm going to let that uh, dry for a few minutes and then I'm going to go back over the nose and the white in the eyes and then I'll trim out in the black again. Okay, so I have my face done. I just went over the white again and then I trimmed everything else out in black again and went over the nose a second time and then I took a fine black sharpie and did the stitching around the nose. Okay, so now I'm going to add um, some texture here to the hat. And I'm just going to use a little bit of the khaki by Apple Barrel to do that. And it's best if you have kind of a broken up paintbrush. I'm going to just do a little bit of dry brushing, put a little bit on the paint. Excuse me, put a little paint on your paintbrush. Go ahead and remove any excess. And then I'm just going to lightly go through and add a little bit of distressing and texture to this so it doesn't just look all flat. And I just do that simply by having a small amount of paint and lightly brushing back and forth. I want to keep my strokes in the same direction on the brim. I'm going back and forth on the top part of the hat. I'll be going this way. Just grab it and go through and add just a little bit. And hit some on the edges. And just do it until you like it. A bit too much. And again, if you get too much or you don't like it because too much got on there, you can always break out some more of the dark paint and go back over it, which I normally do that anyway, just to help break up everything. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And I just go back with just a little bit of the dark. The same color that I used at the base, which was the burnt umber. And again, just start with a small amount. And that'll help you kind of break up and weatherize it a little bit more. So just go ahead and keep working on that until you get them the way that you like them. Okay, so I have all my distressing done. 
on both of my pieces here. And I went back and I added a little bit of pink. This is the pink parfait. And I watered it down to give me some little pink cheeks. And then I went back with the burnt umber and gave my uh, scarecrow some freckles. And then I also on his shirt went back with the burnt umber and did some distressing on that as well. And then I just kind of darkened this a little bit because it's more of his neck. Okay, so now you're gonna need some raffia or some hula skirt. Uh, we're going to add this as some hair and uh, you just need to decide where you're gonna place your brim and then see where it starts where the head starts on either side. So go ahead and turn that over and then just add some hot glue. Just do a little bit at a time. And then take this and go ahead and lay it down. One of these scraper spatulas work really well. If it's 100% silicone, Hot glue uh, may stick to it, but as soon as it cools, it just peels right off. So this is good to help you not burn yourself. And then just go until you're across the section where you want to have hair. And don't worry, we're gonna go back and trim the length to get it to the right length. Just need to get it on there first. Okay, so I have all my hula skirt attached. I just double check before we're going to glue this down to make sure that the hair covers. Now I will trim this to the length I want once I get this glued down. So I'm going to use some of the Crafter Square woodwork glue and hot glue to glue it down. Go ahead and glue down the rim of your hat. Okay, then once your rim is on, you can go ahead and trim the hair. Now remember, this is a scarecrow, so it's not going to be really even. So when you're trimming it, trim it kind of at an angle so that you get different lengths. Okay, I got all my hair cut and I think it looks so cute. Now before I go any further and uh, glue more adornments on the front, we're gonna go ahead and flip this over. Now you're going to need a wood ruler from the Dollar Tree. They come two to a pack. Now if you can't find the uh, stake sign for the brim, you can also use the wood rulers. Um, depending on how thick you want your brim, you can use one, you can put two next to each other, or do two and then a third one in the middle. So you can do that for the brim if you can't find that sign. But you will need one wood ruler for the back. And I just removed um, the measuring, they simply peel off. Now what we're going to do is we're going to use this as a stand. Okay, so it will pivot out so that you can stand up the sign. To do that, you're also going to need a package of hinges. This is a one and a half inch, 38 millimeter hinge. I picked this up at Lowe's. You get two in a package and they come with screws. Now I'm not going to be using the screws. So the first thing that you're going to want to do is glue one end of this to your ruler and i'm going to use hot glue and wood glue and glue it right in the middle you want to make sure not to get any glue on the hinge because that's what's going to um, allow you to stand it okay 
just going to go ahead and put some of my wood glue down. That'll give me my long-term hold. And then a little bit of hot glue to give me a permanent hold, or excuse me, a quick hold. And you want to make sure that that hinge closes all the way down, okay? If you glue it the wrong way, it won't go all the way down. It'll only go to a certain point and stop. Okay, so you want to make sure that it folds all the way down. Okay, then you're going to take that and you're going to put it in the center of your board. And you're going to have the base at, this, at the bottom of the board. And then you're going to do the same thing and you're going to glue that piece with hot glue and the wood glue. So I'm going to go ahead and put the glue right on the metal piece. that will be your kickstand. To stand up your sign. I'm also going to add a little piece of ribbon at the bottom here so that it doesn't come all the way out because as you can see that can go that far. Okay, to add your ribbon, go ahead and stand your sign up. And see how far out you want that kickstand to come. And then you want to go ahead and take your ribbon and you want to measure. And then you want to add about two inches onto that for the gluing. And then go ahead and cut your ribbon. Now I'm just using um, the 5 eighths of an inch of the burlap ribbon. Okay, so the first thing is I'm going to glue it to the board. I'm just going to use some hot glue and add just a little bit of glue there. Then I'm going to place my ribbon in by about an inch. glued it to the back of the board and then I'll pull it up and then I'm going to do the same thing. I have to reattach that. Okay. That's okay. So we're going to attach this to the base and you want to glue it about an inch. Okay, so I've run into a bit of a problem trying to get this metal to be glued down. The hot glue will just not hold and the wood glue won't set fast enough for it to hold. So, I have switched to the Crafter Square Craft Glue. This dries clear and it does set up and get tacky rather quickly. So I'm going to let this set. It's still movable before I try to attach the other side because I don't want it to fall apart again. Okay, so while I'm waiting for this to dry, flip this guy over, and we will finish putting on our adornment. Okay, 
Okay, so you're going to need a package of the decorative bows. This is the one that I chose. They come two to a pack. And then I just cut the tails off because I want it to look like a bow tie and not a bow bow. Okay, so I just cut the tails off and I'm gonna hot glue that on. Dress up my scarecrow a little bit. I can't express how much I like using these silicone tools when I hot glue. They make life so much easier and I burn myself a whole heck of a lot less. I have this pick that I picked up from Dollar Tree. I really like it. It has a nice sunflower on it, a pine cone, some leaves, and some twigs. And it's all wrapped together already, so they did the designing for me. And I'm going to hot glue this guy up here. And I just bent the stem so I could wrap it around the back so you don't see it. I'm going to place them right up here. Now see, I took the stem. I didn't cut it, but I just kind of wrapped it around. And I'm going to hot glue it on both sides. Let's start on this side. that to set up. Okay, if you would like to hang your sign instead, you can just simply put a piece of jute cord. I tied a knot on either end and then set it with hot glue. So you can hang it that way or you can go ahead and do the kickstand. And the kickstand did work using the craft glue by Crafter Square. Um, that did adhere the wood to the metal. So that worked well. You do need to let it sit and fully harden before you use it. So uh, if you're going to do the kickstand, you'll want to do that last so that you can let it sit and fully set up. Okay, I'm all done. I got my pick nicely glued up here on his hat and I'm really happy and he's sporting his bow tie. Well, I hope you enjoyed today's craft. If you did, please give me a big thumbs up. It really does help out my channel. And if you can give me some love in the comments, that really does let YouTube know that I have content that's worth watching. Thanks again for stopping by. It's always a pleasure to see you. I hope you and your family are all staying happy, healthy, and strong. You have a great day, and I will catch you next time.